Hello, my name is Rex Basterfield, and this is a quick demo run through of my Qualcomm Sim Clav, which unsurprisingly is designed to simulate the sounds of clavichords, which are very old, and clavinets, which are relatively new. Now, the ancient clavichord instruments and the more modern clavinet instruments use the same principle of operation which is to hammer a string from a key uh, hitting it with something called a tangent which sets the thing vibrating and the point at which the tangent hits the string determines the pitch of the string since they use similar operating principles it made sense to make an instrument that could simulate both of these types of clav. So now I'm going to give you uh, a very quick overview of the instrument. At the top is the preset manager and there's uh, a range of presets to get you started there. Then we have the general panel which is where you set the main timbre of the instrument. Next down is the envelope generator and this does a lot more behind the scenes than just control the amplitude. It's also where you can set the key action sound. The sympathizer uh, simulates sympathetic resonance between the strings that aren't currently sounding. The soundboard um, simulates the enclosure of an acoustic instrument and it's also useful on the electric instrument for affecting the, uh, the sound of the pickup. Next down we have a, a bass and treble control where we can not only set the uh, lift or cut of bass and treble but also the, uh, the changeover frequencies for the uh, shelving filters. Then we have uh, an effect spin where we can uh, chain any four or up to four effects in series. So we can have a graphic EQ in one, we can have a wah-wah in two and so on and you can have up to four of the same one if you want. At the end of the signal effects chain is Martin Vickenek's excellent Mverb 7B reverb. Following a uh, request or suggestion I had a while back uh, I always include a simple recorder where you can record up to 10 seconds of sound which when you've armed it you play a midi note and then it starts recording so you can record clips or just single sounds to put into a sample or whatever you wish to do with it. So going back to the general panel which is probably the most interesting we have three controls here which have a big uh, impact on the timbre of the instrument. The hardness of the tangent The hardness of the strings or the tension on them, this is the knob gives you a range of control over that sound. So very thin for thin strings. Now there are two options for the so-called pickup. So if we go fully anti-clockwise it goes onto microphone for a, a more acoustic sounding instrument. When we advance it from zero, it brings in uh, electromagnetic pickup simulation to a varying degree. One very important aspect of simulating a clavicle, clavinet, is what I've termed when it unfrets. So you release the key and then the strings are damped not by a damper that acts on the string but by an, uh, a felt weave which dampens all the strings together. So when the key is released it goes back to being full length. So if I increase the release time you'll hear this better. Uh, 
And this sets the pitch range of the on fretting. And the release time interacts with this control to give you that all important uh, release sound. Now the owner clavinet only had one string uh, per note, as did many clavichords, but the more elaborate clavichords had two strings which were tuned in unison, so here's the effect of adding the second string. Which of course you can detune. Horribly so if you wish. But the detuning is nice. Something that the old clavichords did not have was a mute lever, which uh, Honer introduced with their uh, clavinet, the electric version. So this is the effect of the mute. It's not actually turning the voice off, it's deadening it. And if you like the mute sound, the timbre of it, you can still turn up the decay to get a more, a longer decay. So that's the mute button. Clavichords, the old instruments, now were very notorious really for being very, very quiet. Uh, being acoustic instruments, if you want to mic one up and get the sound, then you will also hear the keys clattering away. So here we set the level of that key cutter. Some recordings I've uh, watched on YouTube of uh, old clavinets, the, the key noise sounds pretty much as loud as the actual tone itself. So uh, bear that in mind if you want to make a more accurate simulation of an old clavichord. I should also mention that uh, clavinets actually pick up some of this key sound because of the microphony of the strings and the pickups which are mounted onto the base of the instrument. So even on uh, an electric clavinet you will still get a little bit of key noise breaking through. One of the real classic sounds of a clavinet playing funk music is the automatic wah-wah. So I just set this preset up to show that. <laughs> Uh, something I like to do once I've designed uh, and developed a synthesizer with a specific sound in mind is to alter the parameters to see what other uh, sounds it can make. So I'm going to run through some of those presets now without any comment and you can have a listen.
So there you go. That's my Quilcom sim clav for you. And uh, I hope you have some fun with it. Read the user guide, please, if you want to know all the bits and pieces. And uh, until the next time, bye.